reading for April 11th, entitled, The Influence of Mind on Mind. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 and 25. How vain is the help of man when Satan's power is exercised over a human being who has become self-exalted and who knows not that he is partaking of the science of Satan. In his self-confidence, he walks right into the enemy's trap and is ensnared. He did not heed the warnings given and was taken as Satan's prey. If he had walked humbly with God, he would have run into the trysting place God had provided for him. Thus, in times of danger, he would have been safe, for God would have lifted for him a standard against the enemy. The peril of delaying to come to Christ is not discerned by those who are under the power of Satan. But when there comes the sense of acknowledged guilt, how the stricken soul hides himself with his God. Let guilty sinners come close to the one who is their atoning sacrifice. Let them cling to him as with the grip of death. No human being can heal the soul that has done despite to the Spirit of Christ. Only through the Savior can healing be obtained. This is an age of skepticism and unbelief, an age of hatred of reproof. Let men beware how they entertain the sentiments of satanic agencies. Let them remember that mocking at the warnings of the Lord may mean their being left to their own way. The only hope left is to turn to God with full purpose of heart. God will pardon the transgressor if he will repent. Men have turned away from the warnings given and are being deceived through the influence of mind over mind, and the results are most deplorable. One sinner, under the influence of the enemy's deceptions, can work untold harm. Oh, how many souls have had their faith ruined and their confidence spoiled by the protestations of belief in the testimonies uttered by those who for years have shown positive disbelief in them. I was relieved when some who had been making these protestations decided that the time has come to take an open stand against them. I felt relieved because minds will not now be captivated by assurance after assurance that they believe the testimonies. Oh, if those who have had faith in these men could only know how the Lord regards their confidence in those who, while men slept, have been sowing tares among the wheat. Taken from Letter 126, dated April 11, 1906, to G.I. Butler, President Southern Union Conference.